I'm Dr. Ramona, and as usual, I'm here with my sister, Dr. Renee, and this week we are on week number 10 of our pineal gland inspired journal. So our theme this week is be your own hero. You know how this goes after 10 weeks. What we're going to talk about is the ongoing effects of our consistent, continuous practice on the body, the mind, and the spirit. So let's go. All right, we're back. So what's your intention this week, Renee? My intention is to release my expectations and to go with the flow. I mm -hmm. think it's time to really embody that. Just release it, release expectations and just see what happens. You know, live in okay. the, the unknown quantum. All what right. about you? For me, it was allow and to have more fun with it <laughs> which in a sense is a lot like what you're doing releasing expectations is a sense of allowing but the fun is something that that I'm feeling in the moment so that's been my intention to work on this week that's good because after 10 weeks you got to have fun or it's really hard to get back out here between two and four o'clock in the morning got to enjoy what you're doing joy is what we're aiming for good for you Let's dive into our experiences, body, mind, spirit experiences. This week, it seemed like almost every early morning, I began with a first breath gamma sprite. And that took me into an interesting thought that all of this 10 weeks of continuous practice has actually really, we talked about priming the pump, but I think yes. now that the is truly sensitized to what is happening when the breath comes up and hits it. It knows what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to activate and it activates. It doesn't maybe activate so big that I'm totally blown out of the water, but it activates. And that's really heartening. I've always been looking for colors in the middle of the week on Wednesday. I think it was, I saw this beautiful array of green. Wow. And I said, okay. I know this is green. <laughs> and for me, when I usually see just gold and white, and maybe a hazy blue or some sort of haze, but this was green. And it stayed with me for at least one full track, so several breaths. And it was wonderful because perhaps the coherence, heart brain tying together coherence that I was doing before the pineal gland breath technique really took today. I don't know the reason, and I really don't care. <laughs> I just <laughs> to see the color, the color green in my mind's eye. And that was very joyful for me. So again, there's joy. So something really new did happen for me this week while I was bringing the energy up to the pineal gland. And that was that during the Sprite, not just the yellow and the white, but what happened is that there was a trembling and that has never happened for me before. I was very aware that as it came up, there was this faking like this. And I was thinking, okay, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? because it was a completely new awareness for me or a shift of the way it was reacting, way the breath was pushing into the gland and making something happen. So I was saying, oh, what's this? Are we going further? But eventually that trembling just calmed down back into the yellow color. But it was beautiful. And it, to me, it's a, a subtle change thought and I captured it in its mind and in mind <laughs> forever. So ultimately, I think the fact that I had sprites pretty much right off the get-go and the color green and that shaking was beautiful. And after 10 consistent weeks of practice, I'm getting more, uh, the breath, bringing up the breath with the Ida Pingala up the, up the line is much more consistent. I'm not thinking about it much. It just happens coming up. It's very relaxed. It's very automatic. And I'm pleased with all of that process, all of that progress. Fantastic. It sounds like you had a really good week. Yeah, I think I had a good week. What about yourself? Well, yes, it was a good week. I felt my cells literally vibrating. Have you ever felt that? I don't know. I, the trembling that I had may not be a cellular vibration. I don't know how to equate those two. Okay. For me, it felt like my cells were literally vibrating from my brain down to my neck, my legs, my feet, the whole body. And it happened several days. I started thinking about it like uh, you felt a tuning fork, because right when you strike a tuning fork, you can feel 
the, the vibration that it puts right. off, right? And that sometimes, sometimes you can't even get it close to the bone because it could hurt. Oh yeah, definitely. But that's what it felt like, okay? That vibration, that visceral feeling of vibration, like somebody had struck a tuning fork close to me. That's how wow. it felt when the energy was rushing up and down the body. And I just thought that was just pretty awesome. <laughs> you were talking last week about how we're looking for more evidence from subtle emanations, but also yeah. that you had mentioned that we are an integrated collective of cells and that each of them has to be convinced, right? Each of them has to be convinced that what's happening is something they want to participate in. And so there's an entrainment going on. And this feeling of having a tuning fork running up and down or right next to you was like a whole body entrainment. Huh. That's how I was seeing it. So that was the biggest thing. You talked about the ease of your visualization, which brings me to a point because the visualization of the double helix is easier up than it is down. Don't know why yet, but it just is. Intensity of my focus, we were talking about that in week nine last week, as a way of tuning into the more subtle variations and progress that we're making. And I'm thinking that this visualization still needs some practice aligned with this week's intention of allow and have fun. It's not smooth enough yet to just allow and have fun if I'm still engrossed in focusing on so tightly on the visualization. Uh -huh. but it's easy when you know how to read to read, right? But when you're initially learning, like I am, in terms of this visualization going up from the perineum to the pineal gland, in that double helix pattern, like I said, up is easier than down. And so allowing and having fun wasn't quite as <laughs> fun because I'm still focused on the movement of it, the clarity of it. And somebody said to me sometime that the difference between visualizing something and manifesting that visualization is patience. <laughs> that's wonderful. And that's exactly what we all need. That's purely what we all need. We aren't born visualizing. And many people, and even in our practice, in our energy medicine practice, we've asked people their process of learning how to visualize. There are many books out there trying to teach us how to visualize, use our internal eyes to see and to create fine detail. And it's not how we in the Western world, I suppose, we're born to be we're born to see. We use our eyes outward, not necessarily inward. We don't have that kind of a culture <laughs> in which we turn ourselves and our thoughts inward. Visualization is one thing and we have to learn how to do it and it's going to take time. And as Dr. Joe has often said, this manifestation process takes being really clear about what it is you want. How often does he say during that exercise where he asks us to make one, two, three, four different uh, process points of getting from what we want to where we want to be. What will it entail? Make it specific, right? And that's supposed to help us with the visualization. I could give that back to you is that, what can you say? It takes patience in order to learn that new skill. And some of us will do it more easily than others. Artists are visualizers, I would say. They should be able to maybe turn their eyes inward and visualize using the skills that they've learned in their outer world. But I can't say visualization was a skill in my outer world. Focus, perseverance, self-determination, <laughs> all different kinds of things, but not necessarily visualization. But observation is a skill that I know I have created over my lifetime. You, we can use the things we've learned and bring them inward. But patience is time-oriented, right? Patience is time-oriented. And it occurred to me again that Yogananda suggests strongly that as we become engaged with yogic practices, meditation, 
that we release our expectation of supernatural talents and psychic reward. And we just stay in the present moment of what are we doing now and enjoying that. So again, that brings me back to the intention this week of allowing and having fun, just being in the moment and accepting and enjoying and being grateful for what it is I'm noticing and experiencing in the moment that I'm doing it. Yeah, that makes sense because when we're trying to purposely manifest an outcome of awareness, that is an aspect of control. And that means we're not ready for surprise. Right. Surprise is the hallmark of the quantum. It's like something that we won't be expecting because if you expect it, then that's not where it's coming from. You exactly. Know? Exactly. It has to be unexpected. It's good that we recognize this is going to take patience. It's excellent that we say, let go, let be, and flow. Through grace, we will achieve with something that we would never have expected. <laughs> we need to enjoy that, to know that potential is out there. And if we can just continue to apply our practices, our process, our lack of negativity and our desire and passion time in the future when we least expect it that's exactly what's going to happen so here we go week number 11 does, comes up week number 11 it does behoove us to become clear about what it is we want why you're doing what you're doing clarity is important clarity, clarity. is important. right anything yeah. else now wrap up, saw that beautiful green, so happy seeing that beautiful green. And the trembling was just unique and different. And that sudden surprise, what does this mean? What does this portend? And I'm looking forward to seeing it again when it manifests. Okay. How about you? For me, it was just confirmation that the visualization pathway towards manifestation has to do with having patience and allowing in the present moment. That's beautiful. Excellent. So right. see you week 11. Week 11. Take care. Take care. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. That way you'll be notified every time we upload a new segment in our 12-week Inspire Volume 1 video journal series. If you'd like to start your own journey, you can purchase Dr. Joe's Inspire Volume 1 10 Tracks to Master the Breath album using the direct link in the description. Happy breathing.